Hey guys, welcome to the Garbage Time Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Nolan, and today's podcast is brought to you by Mac Weldon. That's right, producer Matt and producer Dave are not here to talk about their underpants. So I'm I'm going to. Uh, Mac Weldon is better than whatever you're wearing right now. Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. I know I myself got a hoodie. It was very easy to get uh, and very comfortable. Mack Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants you will ever wear. I can vouch for the hoodies part, and they constantly talk about their underwear, so they can vouch for the underwear. And all their products are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor. It's good for working out, going to work, going on dates, just everyday life. And guys, they want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and they will still refund you. No questions asked. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code GARBAGETIME, all one word, no spaces. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com, promo code GARBAGETIME, for 20% off. My guest on today's podcast is my friend Dave McMenamin, who covers the Cavs and the NBA for ESPN. We sat down last week. Uh, for context, this was on Thursday, which was right before the Cavs lost to the Nets and LeBron threw a hissy fit. So that's when we talked. Would have loved to talk about that, but this was right before that. Uh, so we did talk about LeBron unfollowing the Cavs on Twitter, what LeBron's really like off the court, and Dave's job ghostwriting Gilbert Arenas' blog. So uh, take a listen. Dave McMenamin, thank you for being here. Thanks for having I'm me, I'm going to say your name as much as possible because it's really fun to say. It's it's Mc nine Mc letters Mc of fun. <laughs> <laughs> McMenamin, 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 McMenamin. Um, we're gonna get to a whole bunch of stuff, but I feel like we should just jump right into the LeBron stuff that's yeah. happening right now. As you are the Cavs beat reporter, not beat writer. Mm-hmm. I read you. Yeah, I've been reading. Um, so he unfollowed the Cavs on Twitter yeah. this week, and uh -huh. everyone is freaking out about it. What's the latest on that right now? Well, we've moved on from one drama to the next. Yes. Now he did an interview with Howard Beck with Bleacher Report back in February, but it didn't publish till this week, where he said that someday, maybe soon, maybe later, I want to play with Dwayne Wade, I want to play with Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony. Mm -hmm. And that means that he would probably not be able to have Kevin Love and you know, Kyrie Irving as teammates to make it happen. Right. So everyone's like, okay, <laughs> this team has the second highest payroll in NBA history. They've been through so much drama already. They fired the head coach halfway through the year. They're 10 games away from the playoffs. First seed in the East. Have, was going to be, have an uphill climb to maybe beat Golden State or San Antonio as it is. And now you just have, like, I guess Le LeBron kind of started the kindling of the fire with the Twitter stuff and the subtweeting. And now he just took like a kerosene lamp and threw it and now it's like burning. The right timing now. of the story is weird though because like you said he did it in February and they put it right. out. Is it weird that he didn't have any control over that and like when they could do a profile like that? Yeah, yeah but I, I mean I've been in Howard's shoes before the, the writer like he was not just interviewing LeBron. He was interviewing Carmelo Anthony. He was interviewing Jeff Bedzelik, the old Nuggets coach, Chauncey Billups, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So just to Wrangle all those interviews takes time, and then to actually write the story, and then it's not like he's, you know, like a, a Lee Jenkins where his only job is to write stories. Like Howard, every day is going in and doing, you know, video stuff and day-to-day -day stuff. So it seems maybe like an opportune time to run it, mm. but at the same time, I don't think he was maybe waiting and like biding his time. Like, okay, the Cavs are struggling now. Let's drop the story. I don't think that's what he did. Yeah. So that happened. Social media stuff happened. Why do you think he unfollowed? The Cavs. Uh, this story fascinates me because he just he unfollowed a thing on Twitter, and it's like this big. It's huge story. It was, and it's funny. Like I like to be able to kind of dictate my own coverage and you know like decide what is relevant. Mm. And with this, you know, it was basically some fan like decided to check LeBron's Twitter followers and say, oh. He is following less people. Who's he not following? I always wonder who the person is that finds that. Like it's, when LeBron liked that picture once on Instagram, like, like a, who saw that? Right. Yeah. It was so a butt, but there's right? people. You were gonna say yeah, like a booty. Butt. I was gonna it say was, booty. Oh, yeah. a booty. <laughs> I think it was like big booty or something like that. Was the name of the actual Instagram? <laughs> it is your job to know. Yeah. So, so something yeah, along it's those just lines. Just research. But I mean, listen. Big booty. We had the Kurt Rambis story this year. Yep. Um, I where love that he was story. hacked into liking some sort of. Booty date, nice booty daily, big, good butts daily. <laughs> you can put any three His words was, in the category. I think it was like nice butts daily yeah. or something was the Twitter right. account. 
uh, yeah, which is akin to nice butts monthly. Right. But they don't have, more they butts. just have Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah more no butts. No Twitter for them. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I, you know, maybe he did it and then he was caught and then he had to come up with some sort of thing that would make sense. And then you can lean on his past experience. He's kind of shut down social media in the playoffs. But then he tweets he's going to join Snapchat. So yeah. you're not really shutting down no, social media. No, not so much. Like, when I first saw that, I was like, okay, you just trolling us because we just had this, you know, kind of explanation given to by someone in your camp that, you know, this is just along his lines in the past. And then so I reached out to someone else in the camp and they said, well, you know what, Snapchat's different because you're not reading the comments, you're not reading the mentions. His point for getting, the, the, yeah, I know, it's a, it's a slippery slope type uh, yeah. argument, but his point for getting off social media in the playoffs is like, so he doesn't have all that stuff clouding his head. Right. Whereas Snapchat is just like, he takes a video, puts it out there. Right. And he's done that in the past. He had like a Samsung app a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, and then he had, in, uninterrupted is his thing. Yes. So, um, I don't know. Like, the tough part is like, so they're, I think, 10 and 3 over the last 13 games. Mm. LeBron had a triple double a couple nights ago, oh, Monday, played yeah. really well yeah. on Wednesday as well. I mean, he, he had a half in a half court set had a like a between the legs double pump reverse like in his 13th season at 31 years old. So that doesn't happen, right? Um, so it's working. I, I'm I following like, the Cavaliers. Or it just doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Like, and it's like we have to decide what matters. Yeah, people always freak out about. LeBron coverage and how is this a story and why is this a story right. and you wrote about that kind of about yeah. how um, whether or not you think it's a story personally yeah. it's your job to report on this kind of stuff because I mean, he has if you add his Twitter followers Instagram followers like 50 million followers yeah the NBA finals last season averaged 20 million viewers right so like two and a half times more people potentially see one tweet of his versus like the pinnacle of his sport performing in it and that's you know, some perspective you kind of have to have. Right. Um, but at the same time, it's one, you know, you don't want to be reacting to like crazy people. <laughs> like you don't want the people, the people who write in the comment section to right. like give you story ideas, like the same ideas, that's, that's right? Not it's kind of dangerous, to live your life. right? <laughs> but here, like if people are just going overboard just because of whatever he did on a whim, like, you know, does it matter? And then we ask him for explanation. I guess that's our job because we have access to the, the player. And then, you know, you're potentially hurting your relationship with that player because they're like, why is this person always asking me about my Twitter? Like, doesn't he have anything better to ask? Do you think athletes need to be mindful of that? Isn't that sort of their job? I mean, he knows how many people are following him, sort of a responsibility. He should know. He's LeBron at this right. point. If you tweet or do anything, someone's going to see it and find but it. But that's why, so the, like when you ask him why he did it, like yeah. part of me thinks maybe he did it just to get attention. And he's been used to being the center of attention for this sport for the last decade plus. Yeah. And now the Warriors are getting a ton of attention. And now there's Kawhi Leonard's being praised as the next great thing. And, you know, maybe he wants it back on him. And also, like, I've, you know, I wrote in that column, um, I've had someone suggest to me that he just thrives in chaos. He's, you know, when he was a kid growing up, sleeping on couches, single parent household, um, switching from school to school, and he can, you know, stir up the same type of chaos now. By clicking on follow. By, by clicking on follow. That's so much easier <laughs> than right? all the other yeah, stuff. You don't, like, watch what happens yeah, when I do yeah, this. Yeah, like, I can still eat my steak dinner and I can unfollow, <laughs> you know. Uh, he's not, uh, the Cavs aren't the only ones he unfollowed on Twitter. No. Where, I don't know what you're hinting at. Uh, we unfollowed like Chris Broussard. Yeah, yeah Chris. Uh, and you. Oh, I thought you were say Lee Jenkins. You. Yeah, me. Uh, it was weird. How does that feel? Well, First of all, LeBron followed you. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it's kind of kind of dope. Yeah, sometimes during the summer. Uh, Blake Griffin happens. followed me the other day. I have Who did? No Blake idea. Griffin. Yeah, I have oh. no idea why. It kind of freaked me out. He likes comedy, right? I guess so. Yeah. Question mark? Yeah. I don't know. I think he tries to be in that the circle. But I didn't tweet like anything basketball related. I'm still trying to figure it out. We can talk. When about someone this later. follows you, like, do you send like a quick DM, like, "Hey, Good enjoy God, no. your work." Never. Like, no, I don't open that door. Get out of my DMs. But Please even if it's say, say it's like a. If it's a lady, sure. Yes. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. yeah. Hey. I'm not hi. saying like yeah, like the slide into the DM. Yeah. No. If I say like, "Hey, Blake, thanks for following me," not a good. Yeah, I guess. You right. Keep that yeah. door closed just in case. 
whatever. Yeah. Uh, what were we actually talking about? Uh, oh, so LeBron unfollowed, LeBron unfollowed me. Yeah. So the funny part about that is we were writing a story about him following unfollowing the Cavs. Mm. We have like the media room in the Cavs Crick and Lowe's Arena. We're there, you know, past two a.m. usually, or not, not that's exaggeration. Past midnight usually. Mm. Myself, a couple other writers for different newspapers in town. And so we're all writing the paper, uh, writing the story, and we're like, so, so we're all on the same page. How many did he go from 167 followers down to 159? We were having that conversation. What a conversation to right. have. And then Jason Lloyd of the Akron Beacon Journal is like, oh, he's down to 153 now. I'm like what? And this was like after the game, we had already like, you know, been kind of given this explanation from someone in his camp that this is his social media blackout policy getting started. Mm. And Jason's like, yeah, and he's not following you anymore. <laughs> so it was like real time. Did you cry? No, I didn't cry. But the funny part was like I had to like write about it because it was news uh -huh. or news. And so I had to be like, he un and then he un subsequently unfollowed Chris Broussard, Lee Jenkins, and David So he unfollowed Benedict. you. Oh, I was going to say, did he unfollow you first? But he unfollowed all Follow, of you. Yeah, yeah. Follow afterwards. But I had to like, on a story with my byline I on noticed it, I had that. to say. Why? Why can't you say myself? Is that like a weird it's, journalistic it's, thing? It's, yeah, it's more of that would be like a column or something like that. Mm. You could, I could have done this reporter, but uh, that's like, to me, very awkward. Interesting. Yeah. So. It stood out to me too. I yeah. like scrolled back up. I'm like, wait, you wrote this yeah. story and you had to write. I mean, I talked to an editor about it. They, they said like that's probably the best way to go, but yeah. it's it's like a, it's a weird thing because you become part of the news to some extent, which is yeah. not really. That doesn't help me do my job. Become part of the news. Right. You, know? you want to be kind of like the observer the and just give, you know, let people know what's going on. So you're gonna try to get him back. <laughs> yeah. What can I do? I don't know. I think once you've DM'd a person, you are you can get into their DMs. Have you ever DM'd him before? Because you could slide uh, back in. Actually, you could probably talk to him face to face. Yeah, I mean, so that's what we it. really do. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, this is breaking news. We have DM'd before, but I didn't oh know that. Man. If so, if you've DM'd and then they unfollow, so. you can do that? Maybe not in that order, but like I can DM a person I, that I don't follow, and that opens the door to them, and then they can DM me back and forth. I don't have to follow them anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if that DM this thread still exists, you can I go think. back to it. I don't know. Interesting. I'd I didn't to, know that. I'd have to check. No one's ever unfollowed me. So like, <laughs> Never in your life. Check. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Richard Deitch unfollowed me the other day. <laughs> it hurt my feelings. That's like my LeBron unfollowing me. Richard Deitch was like, no, thank you. I was wow. Like, Ouch. What happened? I have no idea. You've been on his podcast, right? I know. I think it's that um, he covers sports media and my show's on hiatus. And so I think he's like, don't care. You're mm. not relevant. Does he keep his like follow count low, I think, perhaps? I don't care. Yeah. Well, I'm not, it what, didn't this, hurt this my feelings. This conversation is it this, It didn't though, right? hurt. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Um, so do you think that the strategy of like this zero dark 23, 23. which is so dumb. It's uh, easy. Do you think that's a good strategy? Smart? Bad? Useless? Probably doesn't help? I actually, yeah, I don't want to pander here, but I think it makes sense. Like he's 29 million Twitter followers. That's I don't know insane. how you can manage like your timeline with something like that like i i get just by like proxy you know a lot of people follow me just because i write about lebron mm -hmm. and you know the, the amount of vitriol on an average day like it doesn't help my mental state and i'm not trying to win a championship so yeah i i, I think i can get behind that explanation it's surprising to me that he reads his mentions and stuff. He does yeah he i think i've heard get... you said you don't no i do well i do oh, but i do. get yelled at for okay. it okay. and told that I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, but I don't have even one million followers. Right. So I can't imagine that his timeline isn't just it would be constantly. Overwhelming. So the funny thing is that you do you do see is he's always having to ask like teammates for cell phone chargers because it, it must just oh, drain wow. his battery all the time. Can he not afford a cell phone? No, 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 like, I don't know. I guess like it's just something, it's something we often see him needing a cell mm. phone charger. You think he would just buy one? Yeah, that would be makes sense. Yeah. Or a or a cell phone charger I, I guess company. I'm more, more on the road. I'm, I'm yeah, saying just you know. buy Apple as a company because you're LeBron James. Part of his Beats deal, I'm sure he could maybe do that. Yeah. Yeah. Needing a cell phone charger. <laughs> Come on, LeBron. How much do you think this media circus and his Twitter behavior actually affects the team? Because you're there and you yeah. see it. We all pretend we know what we're talking about, but you watch it happen. Yeah. Is, is there a weird? Listen, I, I think. Like, us in the media, we don't ask them about it every day because it's like it is what it is. But the thing is that we only see so much of their day. And, like, they have friends. They have 
their own Twitter timeline, uh, fl- uh, you know, clouding their mind. They have family, they have agents, they have, you know, shoe reps and all that stuff. So that, to me, I think is where it can become problematic. I don't think us in the media asking a couple of questions about it every so often when it spikes up is can be the major distraction, but it's just, it becomes something in, in their life that they kind of is only there because of LeBron. And mm. that to me can be annoying. Yeah. Um, like if your Twitter account affected my life, I would yeah, find that like, very what, annoying. What the, yeah. you know, like t- to be honest, as a journalist, I don't enjoy this. So it, like, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really help my relationship with LeBron. I mean, I'm not gonna like, you know, I understand it's part of the job, but yeah. I can't just decide like, I only wanna write about game sevens. I'd love to do that. I can't, but I can, I, I can relate to a teammate in the same sense that like, the last thing I want to be doing, last night I was writing about, you know, LeBron making a comment, wanting to play with Dwayne Wade and Chris Paul and stuff like that, when I was working on this big, bigger story that I was really excited about, and the bigger story had to kind of go to the wayside and to kind of write about the low-hanging fruit that everyone wanted to talk about. Yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah. How often does that happen? With LeBron, <laughs> kind of a lot. I imagine it does. Because yeah. it's like, it's its own news cycle. Like, everything he does, and everyone, like, jokes like, oh my gosh, like, you're writing about, like... You know, what he ate for breakfast and stuff like that. If he wore headphones in his pregame or right. if he listened to it headphones over the speakers. Or wore you a head, headband or if he Ugh. threw up the, the chalk, chalk toss. Ugh. But it's like, there. I guess there's a market for it. I guess. Like, I, like I've never had an editor tell me, you know, this story did really good traffic, do more of those type of stories. But you just also just know what the threshold is. Mm-hmm. Like, pretty much anything he does is, to some extent, is interesting to somebody. There's an audience for it. Or he wouldn't have a 29 million follower base on, yeah. on Twitter. So you got to be responsible. You can't just ignore stuff. That's wild, yeah. though. Did you ever think that you were going to be writing about such such exciting, <laughs> Never did. exciting well, I, details I of a human's the, life? I started going to the NBA in 2005, 2006, and there was no Twitter then. So yeah. like, I did not think. Well, so, but you, uh, you played an interesting role in, uh, in athletes and social media at the very beginning. Because you Towards ghost start, wrote. Yeah. Gilbert Arenas' blog for NBA.com, yeah, right? I did, yeah. That must have been a weird job. It was super weird. Uh, I was I, I started at NBA.com on the news desk, so I was like an editor. Yeah. And then I did that for a year, and then a, a features department job opened up. So I was fresh on the job. Some of our senior writers were like overseas with teams for their training camps, and we had signed up. Like the, basically, the way it worked, the NBA had chosen certain players that they kind of wanted to market through this, you know viral marketing, I guess, of having a blog. Mm-hmm. And so they were gonna do the first blog, or first session with Gilbert in person. And I was like, I'll do it, sure. Like first week on the job in the features department. I was like 23, he was 24. Took the train down to DC from, I was in Secaucus, New Jersey was the NBA entertainment offices. We were supposed to get 10 minutes. We got like 45 minutes because we kind of were similar age, knew the language of basketball. And just grew from there. We sort of used to do it like once a week or once every two weeks, and then we'd go through the Wizards PR department, and then it got to the point where like we cut out the middleman, we just text or he would text me whenever he wanted to, to talk and do the blog, and or sometimes we do like two or three a week, and sometimes it would last for two hours on the phone. That's and crazy. It, it was insane. So uh, that was the process. He would call you, or you would call him. Yeah, and he, he would, would just text tell me. You? He would text me blog. That would be, <laughs> and then I would have to go like a bat phone. <laughs> right. Like, the blog. hard part is I like you can't. At least I don't even know if I can do it now, but you can't record a conversation on a cell phone. Like, like if you're I, on the phone, right? Like I guess you put it on speaker and do it, do it. But I don't know. Back then, I would always have to find a landline. Yeah. So I would either have to like go. Mostly, I'd have to just go in the office, no matter what time it was. So it was like a weekend, or it was like. I would go in the office sometime at midnight, and uh, like after a game, because yeah. he wanted to like vent. But it, you know, it turned out being really good stuff. It was like it was stuff you weren't accustomed to reading. Right. And now Gilbert, you're not accustomed to athletes like him, so you right. just add like kind of a no filter plus like a different medium, and it was, you know, we had a really good audience. It was it was doing like the best track of anything we had on the site. Yeah. And like I was like. <laughs> my first thing I did on the job, like, let's go, it's you know. a wild yeah. job. How long yeah. did you do that for? We did it for about two seasons. Then he had some knee issues, and then it was kind of sporadic after that. And, 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 you know, and then he like stopped. How, yeah. It was like Players' Tribune before, yeah. before Players' kind Tribune. Yeah, kind of like that, because yeah, Players' Tribune is presented by Derek Jeter as, like, they're all writing their own stuff. But there's, but they're I not. know plenty of they're journalists. They're definitely not writing any yeah. of it. 
Not, like I think Kobe's poem was probably written by him. I don't think that was, it was through. It was so good. You don't like Countdown, Rolling Up Socks, and... Dear Basketball. Dear Basketball. Ugh. Yeah, well, Ugh. that's Kobe for you. I was going to say, it's your boy. Mm -hmm. Because after you did, uh, after you did that blog... You went, that's when you went to the Lakers, right? Or to cover the Lakers for yeah. ESPN. Mm -hmm. Lakers and Clippers? Lakers and Clippers. Well, actually, I went there first for NBA.com to cover, like, the West Coast or Western yeah. Conference. Did that for a year, then started with ESPN.com and just Lakers. But, you know, you're an NBA reporter in the right. town. Like, did some bunch of Clippers stuff, too. Uh, what was it like being around Kobe all the time? It was, um, it, I mean, I, it, serendipitous in, ter in terms of the timing. Like, when I got there, I think it was in his 13th season, and about to embark on those, you know, two more championships to really cement his legacy. So it it was great. I mean, every every single thing, you're kind of in the thick of it, and you know, and all of a sudden, yeah, I was rel relatively unknown. Not a lot. I mean, again, my biggest thing on NBA.com was a ghostwriter. So all of a sudden, I'm covering something that people care about, and you get to like build, you know, your reader base pretty quickly. So. It was fun, but it was also really intimidating because, like, I was a huge Chicago Bulls fan growing up, and then I had to interview Phil Jackson and be on, like, level ground with him. Mm. And I literally had, like, you know, the team poster with, like, all the caricatures <laughs> hanging on my wall as a kid. And now I'm, like, having to, like, challenge him on a coaching decision, like, in a press conference. So That's it, was, funny. it was crazy. How yeah. are you a Bulls fan? Sixers were really bad when mm. I grew up. I grew up outside the Philly. The Sixers bad? <laughs> yeah, no. that's, I don't. That that's doesn't bizarre, sound. right? I've never heard yeah. that. Uh, so yeah, you like, just picked the Bulls. Oh. I hate people like you. No, that's not fair. We didn't have cable, but we had WGN, and okay. you could watch the Bulls games. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan was a force of nature. He was the greatest to ever play the game. You just picked the Bulls because well, they were I, good. But like, I also you also like, a Yankees fan? That's Come on, don't go there. Are you also a Yankees fan? I am fan? all Philadelphia sports and the Bulls. <laughs> But I'm not like the Bulls anymore. I was Michael Jordan. You like, don't like the Bulls anymore because they're because Michael Jordan. They're not that great no, no, anymore. No, it's just like it's like it, so I try to play basketball. Like mm -hmm. that's the only sport I've ever really cared to try to play. So you want to try to play like the best, right? Sure. This is a great rationalization you've come up with for I, the fact that you just picked the Bulls. I, I don't think I'm the only one there. That's not, I didn't You're pick the, definitely I didn't pick not the, the only one. That's, the the, Eagles, that's what makes it funny. Bandwagons e aren't empty. Yeah, that's not fair though. The Eagles were garbage, and I didn't go to. You know the Cowboys or anything like that. Okay. Philadelphia sports is. Did you want a cookie a fun for that? Time being a that's a Kobe Bryant line actually. <laughs> what? Do you want a cookie for that? That's what Kobe says. Yeah. Do you want a cookie? Yeah. Do you uh, want a cookie I'll, for that? I'll take that out of my vernacular <laughs> immediately. Uh, you went to Kobe's rival high school, right? I did did yeah. that ever come up when you were? Yeah, it came it? up um, the first time I met him. Uh, first time ever. First time I met him in person. Yeah. yeah. I was out in L.A. and like saw him. As he was going out the locker room, and I was like, "Hey, uh, nice to meet you, I'm Dave McMenamin with ESPN." Uh, I went to Radner. Oh, it came up because you dropped well, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Completely dropped it. And then he said, uh, "Radner's the rival high school where I went." Yeah. And he said, uh, "Then why are you talking to me?" <laughs> good. In like good-natured like banter, uh -huh. like not like get the hell out of my way, white kid. But yeah. What was your relationship with him like? You know. It's hard to like really ever feel like you're close to Kobe because I think that's he kind of you look at his like branding. He said like I'd rather hang banners than hang with friends. Mm -hmm. So like I don't think you're ever gonna really penetrate it that much. But I think we had like a solid footing. We had a little bit of connective tissue in terms of, like we knew the same neighborhoods, we knew the same summer leagues and stuff like that out in Philadelphia area. Um, his high school coach was still coaching. You know, when I played against his high school, because I was five years younger than him, so I knew his coach and some of the members of the coaching staff. So we just had enough where it was like, okay, you're here for the right reasons, I guess. Like, you know, I think a lot of the people I've been able to bond with covering the NBA is like, I'm not in it to like play gotcha journalism. I'm not in it to like really like, I mean, I enjoy advancing in my career and getting more notoriety, but I'm not really. I'm not going to make sacrifices to get more attention, like because mm. I'm really I'm in it because I love basketball, and so that's, I think, what we had in common, and it always kind of worked that way. Is it hard when you sort of make these friendships and connections and relationships with players, and then have to write stories that aren't necessarily favorable to them? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I was at a wedding a couple of years ago, and there was a LA Times longtime sports editor sitting at my table, and we were just talking about the industry. And he said that, you know, 33% of the players are going to love you, 33% of the players are going to hate you, and 33% of the players aren't even going to give a shit, like, about you at all. And I always felt like that was really accurate. And so it's like, 
I know that, yeah, maybe I think I have a strong relationship with this player now, but it's it's all transient. Like, yeah. you know, either it, it could change because I find out information that's, you know, changes how you actually feel about them, or you have to write that they're playing poorly and they can't handle it, or they're traded and, you know, you're only covering them for a couple of years anyway, you know? So I, I'm just generally, I like to get along with people, so I'm not trying to be, like, confrontational, I guess, mm. with these players and try to put yourself in their shoes as much as possible. But you can't just protect them blindly because that, you know, that's silly. Yeah. Do you still talk to Kobe ever? Um, I saw him this year. Um, they came to Cleveland right before the All Star break, and they played, and you know, he, he was cool. It gave me like a, you know, a dap, and <laughs> said you're doing big things and Aww. all that stuff. So yeah, it was. Would nice. you get him for his retirement tour? You I, get him like I, a. I actually. Cookie. You no, got him a cookie. I should have got a cookie. It was smart. Mm. Uh, no, I got him like a cheesy. You letter. Really got him something. Yeah, like a che- you know those cheesy cards, like yeah. like now that you retired, it was like all the fill in the blanks, and so it was just like now that you're retired, you can eat sugar cookies. Mm. I actually wrote it's one of his, it's his favorite like vice, That's and then so and then do this and do this, and then like stop dealing with media BS, and then good luck in retirement. Dave. That's cute. Yeah. Very sweet. He'll put it in the huge pile of cards <laughs> yeah. he got from every single person for the last exactly. month, couple months. All right, guys, more with Dave McMenamin coming up in a minute. But first, I want to tell you about Casper, an online retailer of obsessively engineered mattresses at a shockingly fair price. A Casper mattress is one of a kind, a new hybrid mattress made in America that combines premium latex foam with memory foam. You get just the right sink and just the right bounce with the two technologies coming together for better nights and brighter days. Mattresses can often cost well over $1,500, but Casper mattresses cost between $500 for a twin size mattress, $750 for a full, $850 for queen, and $950 for a king size mattress. Comparing that to industry averages, that's an outstanding price point. And buying a Casper mattress is completely risk free. You can try sleeping on a Casper for 100 days with free delivery and painless returns. Statistically, lying on a bed for four minutes in a showroom has no correlation to whether it's the right bed for you. Casper understands the importance of truly trying out a mattress that, in all reality, you spend a third of your life on. And they have a special offer for our listeners. Get $50 toward any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash garbage time and using the code garbage time, all one word, at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. When you're running your own business, you're bound to be busy. Too busy. Too busy worrying about your budget. Too busy scheduling appointments. Too busy to build a website for your business. And because you're too busy, it has to be easy. And that's where Wix.com comes in. With Wix.com, it's easy for you to create your stunning website. Go to Wix.com and create your website today. It's easy and free. That's Wix.com. All right, back to Dave McManaman. So you finish in LA because ESPN says to you, like, we want you to move to Cleveland and cover LeBron and the Cavs full time. <laughs> yeah. Is that an easy decision or is that like, well, I'm in LA and yeah. then there's Cleveland? No, it was. So you got to understand, though, Kobe had kind of gone through those major injuries mm-hmm. in my last couple of years in LA. The last season I covered them, they were 27 and 55. Is that good? Yeah. It's like my Sixers. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, you know, when you're covering a team as a beat writer, beat reporter, you're there every day. And so to cover a 2755 team, like it was like really, I guess it was like, I realized how fortunate I was before because every team I'd cover was like, certainly at least competitive playoff wise, but right. even championship wise. And now you're like, you know, guys don't want, like it was first time I felt like, you know, they don't want to deal with the media. They don't want to open up and tell their stories. It's like all misery. Yeah. And actually went on, the Lakers have this Grammys road trip where it's like seven or eight games every year where they clear out Staples Centers to put up the Grammy stage, have all the rehearsals. And we were also on the road for, I think, like 15 days and they went two and five and like it was just misery. And it was like, what am I doing? Like I just wasted those two weeks of my life. And so I already had that thought process throughout mm-hmm. the season. And then it was, it kind of just fell on my lap where LeBron went back to Cleveland on July 11th, I think. And then about 10 days later, I got a call from one of our editors saying, hey, your name came up. Um, what do you think about moving to Cleveland? He called me on a Friday afternoon. And uh, I was totally taken aback, like, like completely, to the yeah. point where I was, my initial response was, uh, 
I know a couple of people would be good for that job. <laughs> like, because I had had, I'd been in NBA Summer League and was like, we knew that would be a big beat, um, yeah. both for ESPN and for the local Cleveland papers, because, you know, LeBron's a big deal. Right. I just, I'd never put my, myself in those shoes when I had that conversation. So um, I called one of my old editors who I'd worked with at NBA.com and, and later at ESPN. And um, I was kind of like going through the pluses and minuses and uh, his name's Maurice Brooks. And he's like, um, Dave, he like interrupt me. He's like, all you have to tell me is your new address at Cleveland so I know where to send the family Christmas card. <laughs> and he was like, you can't, it's you can't a no not. brainer. You know, yeah. like, you know, I, I didn't own a house in LA, not, not married, no kids or anything like that. So. You know, you get the chance. To maybe now, right now, we'll see what happens. But going back, like LeBron coming back to Cleveland, if he was able to, you know, fulfill his promise and win a championship and break a 50-year championship drought, no joke, it's one of the greatest stories in NBA history. Right. Like and maybe like right it. up there with Michael Jordan coming back from baseball to win a mm-hmm. you know, second three-peat. Yeah. And like to be on the ground floor of that, and I mean, it's like an honor, it's like to be able to to be the person chronicling that and having people rely on your coverage for it. Yeah. So, so I kind of made the decision relatively quickly. I, I decided by that, that Monday, it took the weekend to think it over. Um, but then it was like, oh yeah, I'm actually moving to Cleveland. <laughs> and like, you do like the Facebook search by city and like literally did not have one friend in Cleveland. Shocking. Yeah. I know many friends that have moved to Cleveland. <laughs> do you? After. From LA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's They're a, just a like, whole migration going on. It's just yeah. like one of those pass through cities <laughs> yeah, that everybody exactly. lives in once. Yeah. Um, you, it's kind of a unique assignment, though. You're like on a local beat, but you have to cover it nationally. Right, nationally, yeah. What's that like? Um, it's funny because you, you, you know, we have like a, a bit of like it's like a competitive camaraderie between myself and the other beat writers or beat reporters in town. Um, but they have different responsibilities than I do. But I also feel like I just feel like I'm shirking my responsibility if I don't write like the minutia stuff mm. because it's you are still serving like Cavs fans, right, on some level, but you still want to serve national programs like SportsCenter and ESPN.com's main page, so. And kids in Philly who just choose the Cavs <laughs> as their team because. Exactly, there's LeBron some there. young me who is fed up good. with what Brett Brown and Sam Hinkie is doing mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. he's gonna have a LeBron poster on as well. Yeah, so yeah. you've gotta really be good to him. Yeah, but I mean, I guess the, the part, basically it comes down to just a lot more LeBron coverage. Yeah, you know? a lot of LeBron yeah, coverage. a lot of LeBron coverage. All the time. Mm-hmm. Is, there an, is there another team that has a writer that's specifically, because I feel like it's, you're like the LeBron guy, that's your role. Yeah. Is there, does ESPN.com have like a Golden State guy? Like I don't Yeah, I think we have uh, 13 NBA teams. So Ethan Sher- Sherwood Strauss is in Golden State. Yeah. Does a really good job. Um, uh, yeah, we have, we have the Knicks, Celtics. Uh, we just got a new Pelicans guy for Anthony Davis, mm. Justin Barrier. Um, so it's really just like the, the, the important person is the only reason that you have a reporter. There. Yeah, the, I guess the only like teams that are like not very good teams that we have them just because of markets is Knicks. like the... Knicks, Bulls, Nets. Mm. I mean, the Bulls are still pretty competitive, but yeah, sure. they're not like a championship team right now. Mm-hmm. That's why you're not My a fan Bulls. anymore. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're falling off. Yeah. Uh, why do you think everybody cares so much about LeBron? I, well, I think there's like, he hasn't really fallen yet, right? True. Like, and I mean, I'm not the first to say this, but our society builds people up and then tries to tear them down. And they, they tried really hard to tear them down. Like they tried to make a made-for-TV reality program that raised $3 million for charity be, like, the worst thing anybody's ever done, you know, or leaving your hometown at 25 years old to go play basketball with your friends, the worst thing you've ever done. The decision was pretty bad. It was it though? Yeah. But, like, compared to what? I don't hold it against him anymore because he was a kid and he had bad people People advising him, him. yeah. But, like, it was bad. But, I mean, relatively, though. Yeah. Bad compared to, like, what, you know? Yeah. I guess compared to not having a television show about where yeah. you're gonna go, being but that like, full of yourself but, and arrogant. But I mean, so is that so bad though? Like, no. is it? I mean, I think like it makes his story. It's like almost unbelievable. It's like if there was a Simpsons plot of a guy, an athlete, like doing the show and then getting killed for it. Like you would be like, what? This is like Conan yeah. O'Brien's a genius. Like he's so funny, <laughs> and this is actually LeBron's life. Yeah. And so I think there's a fascination because of that. Like everything he does is like. Bigger than life for some reason. Yeah. Um, he has chosen one tattooed across his shoulders. 
Yeah. And that was what he was, you know, that was his Sports Illustrated cover at, what, 16 years old? And here he is 15 years later with two championships and four MVPs. And it's as if he's been ch chosen. I don't Tell know. Tell me about him as a person. I don't like, know. is he, what's your relationship with him like? Um, it's, it's strong, I would say. Really? Despite the unfollowing. Yeah. I wouldn't good. say it's that strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It's not as strong as Rachel Nichols and uh. some others out there. Uh, no. It, he's, um, like, he cares, I guess, which helps. Like, he understands the job that I'm trying to do. And he understands, like, despite being one of the most recognizable people in the world, like, if I need to pull him aside to talk to him for a couple of minutes off the record or on the record or something like that, extra, he'll accommodate me, which is, you know, that's huge. Like, that lets me do a better job, which is ultimately what I want to do, you know, for my readers and for, you know, my career. So I have seen him around his kids. He seems to be, you know, a really good father from what I can see. Um, he, like, loves basketball and loves geeking out about basketball, which is, like, what my life's all about. Mm. So that's where we really... I think have some sort of connection, but... Um, is he nice? Is he warm? Uh, I mean, you said arrogant, so he has an ego for sure. Um, at the same time, like, he uses that ego to be like, guess what, Judd Apatow, you're going to have the red carpet premiere in my town. And you and Amy Schumer and, you know, everybody else is going to come to my town because I'm LeBron James. And, like, then he lifts up Akron, like, and it's like, if he didn't have that ego, he'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll do whatever you guys want. Like, I'm just happy to be in the movie, you mm. know? So stuff like that, it's, you can see it serving um, what he's all about. Like he, like, he shouldn't happen, you know? He's, like, doesn't know who his father is and, you know, grew up in poverty. And, and now he's, like, pretty much successful in everything he does, you know, acting and business and basketball and right on down the line and, you know, has three kids and is married to Savannah and all So it's, like... I don't know, like, in some respect, I, I just respect him, you know, as a person, because it's like he took whatever he was given and then, you know, made it into this great empire and, and for the most part, like, seems to do the right thing. So, I don't know, it, I guess it would it'd be interesting, I guess it becomes interesting where it's like, you have that, I don't, not admiration, but you just, you, you understand what he's been able to do with his life, and then you see him get, like, so much criticism for little stuff like unfollowing people on Twitter and it's like well, what are we, are we everybody missing the point here like yeah. you know he, that's not what he's about like but then you know I guess that's just a reflection of like what we are today like yeah, as a you know to, not to be deep but as a society right <laughs> like isn't yeah. that what people that the stuff they actually value is like the stuff that is is so like I don't know trivial you know yeah, that <laughs> got real. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> it got real, real quick. <laughs> what are some awesome experiences you've gotten from this job? Because I feel like I think you met Michelle Obama. I did. That's crazy. Which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was like within a week. Michelle Obama again came down to Akron again. Is like the power of this guy's magnetism. And then a week later, we were in Chicago for opening night, and President Obama <laughs> was at the game. It's like okay. It's pretty cool. So that's the third it's time amazing. or fourth time, actually, I've got to be in the presence of Obama, which is pretty cool. Yeah. To the Lakers won two championships. So I had one trip to the White House and one trip to uh, they won. They didn't want to do White House two years in a row. So they went to like a learning center in D.C. It's pretty cool. They didn't want to do the White House two years in a row. Well, I mean, I guess they Yawn. wanted to. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, what else? Uh, met him or not met him, but I was near him. Uh, Syracuse. <laughs> played a game on the on a aircraft carrier, Syracuse basketball, yep. out in San Diego. Mm. And Obama came for that. So. so you've met him or you've only met Michelle? Only met, only actually spoke to Michelle. So you've just been real close to like Obama? Like Obama, like, <laughs> on the aircraft carrier, I was on the wrong side of, like, the media section. Like, he, oh. he did a bunch of handshakes and then... You weren't one of yeah, them. No handshake. Oh, my yeah. God. Tough life. Unfollowed it's by really LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> Snubbed no, by Barry. No yeah. handshake from Barry. Yeah. Uh, do you have an off season? What do you do when the when LeBron isn't LeBroning? Right, um, I do have an off season. Like, uh, well, the, the, most likely, or maybe they'll play till late June, like they did last year. And the NBA draft at the end of June, uh, start free agency beginning of July, NBA summer league the middle of July, and then once you get to like kind of the end of July, August and September are pretty light. And so I'll travel. Like last summer, I went to. Um, Jeez, where did I go last summer? Iceland. 
No, last time I went to Portugal. Portugal wow. and Spain with some, cool. some buddies for a couple weeks. That's sweet. I spent some time out in Los Angeles with friends. If you're in Portugal and you get like a LeBron just, you know, deleted his Twitter account, do you have to like... Oh yeah, drop everything. Wow. Yeah, a couple of summers ago when I was still coming to the Lakers, Dwight Howard didn't actually become a Laker till a really late summer. Mm. And I was flying back from Munich with some friends and when I was in customs in uh, Chicago, that's when he actually it was announced that he was it finally was gone through. It was like yeah. rumored before then. Yeah. And I almost missed my connecting flight from Chicago to LA because I had to like report. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're like I feel like I could be a really good beat writer for like my ex boyfriends because <laughs> I fall I check up on their that's shit. That's not a good thing. Do you Katie. ever feel like you're like stalking LeBron? You uh, have to check up on him all the time. Y- yeah, I, I don't crush that beat. I, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but once you have that information, what do you do with it to disseminate it? You text it to your girlfriends or whatever? I'm saying I, I could. If there was right. an audience of people that yeah. were like, I, I want to know what I he's up to, that. too. I'd be like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> Three weeks ago, he got a coffee at an odd time for coffee. It's 7 o'clock. <laughs> Maybe we don't drink coffee right now. How are you going to sleep? Do you need me to call you and talk you to sleep? I miss you, too. What? But you still follow them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm that's fucking the, with the you, question. Dave. I'm fucking with you. But don't you ever feel like you're stalking him? You have to like, what did LeBron tweet today? It's not Who fun. does LeBron still follow? I mean, it's 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 really it's not fun. I guess in a way I try to like give myself perspective though because NFL beat reporters are responsible for 53 players. Yeah. You know, baseball, 25, right? Yeah. Um, so 14 guys, I guess, you know. Well, one. Right. How much time one. do you really devote right. to the other? 13. Well, you need to get to know them so that you can ask some questions about sure. LeBron. Right? Exactly. So, <laughs> They're good sources gonna, yeah, for your exactly. LeBron story. Right. Uh, no, nah, I mean, yeah, it gets over the top. I mean, there's been times, you know, when Kobe Bryant was on Jimmy Kimmel and it's, you know, I was out in LA and it airs at 11.30 or something like that on like a Friday night and otherwise you would be off, but you had to watch that so you can make sure he doesn't say any news you know yeah and so you have to plan your night around it like but at the same time it's like you know you get to do really cool stuff in yeah. the court side for game seven of nba finals you know and it's like i guess i can i can make that deal uh how do you feel about about kevin love think, as a person um hmm. i think kevin uh he's really did not know what he was getting himself into in cleveland i don't think anybody did i didn't me covering LeBron and quite know what it would be like. Um, I think he's matured a lot in the last year, and I give him credit for that. I think his natural like personality is to be a little bit of a recluse and you know kind of keep to himself. And he's recognized that they need him not to be that guy when times get tough because a lot of people look to him to be one of the leaders on the team in his own way. And I think he's actually come out of the shell a little bit in that regard. And he's really he really impressed me the way he came back from his shoulder rehab like he hit it really hard and it's, it says a lot about like if you've seen pictures of him when he's younger he's a completely different guy like yeah. like he looks like a different person and he's become really disciplined with all that stuff and um, you know I think he's also recognized that like yeah I'm not the man like I was in Minnesota I'm not on all the billboards getting all the commercials and everything like that but like I get paid the most money I can possibly get paid in this sport based on my salary slot right now and I'm winning more games than I've ever imagined of winning in, in Minnesota before. And yeah, there's some more pressures I have to deal with, but like, this is cool. Like, you know, this is, I get to like be in it. Like, I, I covered Steve Nash late in his career, and he said like the, the main reason he wanted to go to Lakers and leave Phoenix where he had all this great legacy was like he wanted one more chance to like, like be in it, like have everything matter. And I think Kevin's kind of recognized that, the, that everything matters. And the first time he got to do that since UCLA. And it's challenged him, but I think he, he's starting to like relish it. That's good. Yeah. So you like him? I do. I, I think last year I was more critical of him because he came in with this top 10 player reputation and right. he didn't show it at all. But I think I've learned to appreciate like what it was like for him to actually give up. Like being a, like he used to look at the stat sheet and if I, he didn't see 20 points and 10 rebounds, he didn't perform that night so then last year when he wasn't regularly not hitting those numbers it was like really messing with him you know and also he knew he was about to be a free agent and he's right. like is this going to affect how much is this going to cost me millions of dollars and so he's uh i've gained a lot of respect for him speaking of free agency 
uh, do you think LeBron's ever going to wear a uniform that is not a Cavaliers uniform? Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. I don't think it'll be like this summer. But, you know, I was alluding to the story I was writing last night, Tuesday night. Wednesday night, excuse me. Um, LeBron says he wants to play with Kyrie and, excuse me, not Kyrie, excuse me, uh, Chris Paul. If Carmelo only he Anthony. wanted to play yeah, with Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be they convenient. Would it. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Wade, uh, that's, I don't think it's going to happen in Cleveland. Yeah. I would say that would happen one of the two teams in Los Angeles. Is that like a thing you, th- a thing you think? I think that's a thing I think, but I think it will not be happening anytime soon. If that happens, do you then go to oh, the Lakers? Best believe it. If I can, <laughs> yeah, I will call my editors immediately. Like I, like I said, I'd spent time in the offseason in LA. I will again this summer. I love Los Angeles. Uh, that I'd would like really work out for you, huh? It would be fantastic. You should start planting that seed. Uh, who say I haven't done it yet? Good. <laughs> but because I doubt ESPN's like, we'll just keep it. We need a Cavs beat right here. Yeah. Just for Kevin Love. Yeah, they no. would probably not do I think, that. I think we would move so you pieces get to around go a little him. bit. I'd like to. Um, what if he goes to the Sixers? <laughs> Karma. <Cone> <laughs> hey, my family's there. I can make that work. Uh, Cavs Warriors final this year, you think? Uh, I actually think I think Cavs Spurs is, is a little bit more likely to happen. Dave's very <laughs> excited about that as a Spurs fan. Well, I, I, so the you know, Warriors lost a week ago to the Spurs, mm-hmm. which you know, kind of everybody watching and everything like that. And there's two more Spurs games that they have down the stretch. Two of the last three games against the Spurs. I think the Spurs know completely who they are. And they don't, I mean, this is, Draymond Green's a great player, don't get me wrong, but they don't have players going 118 miles an hour on Snapchat and posting about it and <laughs> yelling at their teammates and threatening their coach at halftime of games and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. their record's fantastic. I just think... If, if pressure built and they played a really formidable team like the Spurs in the playoffs, I think the Spurs had a really good shot of getting past them. So, oh. is, there, is there anyone other than the Cavs, Spurs, or Warriors that could win the title this year, you think? I guess the Thunder, but they don't... They have two great players, and beyond that, I'm not sure what they have. And, you know, the Cavs haven't looked that great this year at times, and even when they weren't looking that great, they handled the Thunder. And so... I, they, it, I would expect the Cavs to beat them if they played them. I came into the year with a lot of faith in the Clippers and your boy Blake Griffin, who's following <laughs> My you. My best friend. It's going to DM you after he yeah. watches this podcast. Because like, <laughs> he's going to watch this podcast <laughs> for sure. Uh, but uh, he, uh, with his injury, and that team's been a really disappointment. Your boy Doc yeah. Rivers, too. Weird. What's going on there? He is my boy. Love him. What happened? I don't know. He left Boston, and the, that's never a good idea. But I guess How you can be happy that? with Brad Stevens now. Yeah, no, I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I'm not going to like do something crazy, like be a Bulls fan or something. <laughs> and I've been told to ask you about the first time you went to see Syracuse. I've heard there, <laughs> oh there's a God. story there. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, yeah, okay. So I was uh, in high school, and I guess he's a friend of the podcast. Can we call him that? Adam sure. Stanko? Sure. He knows Matt, one of your producers from ESPN days. Um, I was a, I, I kind of knew what I wanted to do this job for a long time. Like I was 14 when I was first started for newspaper, writing for newspapers. So I worked. What are those? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I worked for uh, a high school sports show that aired on NBC in Philly. And I was an intern. And an on-air talent was this guy, Adam Stanko. And he knew I was applying to Syracuse. And uh, his brother, younger brother, was a senior at Syracuse at the time. He was like, oh, your campus visit with me. Let's go. So getting his, whatever it was, like a, some sort of hatchback, or whatever, drive up four hours from Philly, party, and like, you know, I'm just like six, 17, 16, 17 years old, can't hold my liquor, and like went up to a girl <laughs> at a party and said, uh, you know, you're talking to the next Bob Costas. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Did it work? Um, no, <laughs> but... <laughs> We got a story out of it that we can tell on a podcast 15 years later. Was that your opening line? I don't know, that was involved in the, and yeah, it was like a friend, it was like Adam, so Adam is the guy who worked on the show, his brother Randy is like one of Randy's like good girlfriends. I've never met a Randy, I've always wanted a friend named Randy. Randy? He would be your friend. It's a pretty cool name. Yeah. Randy parties. He did. Yeah. I don't think there's a single Randy that's (laughs) like, I'm all set, I don't need another beer, thank you. Randy just... 
Shotgun spears. Brings them down. Uh, what was her response? Did she just vomit on you immediately? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I think it was like, oh, little child. <laughs> 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 You'll be, we'll take the care next of you tonight. Yeah. Is yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, right? Good line. Isn't it? Crushed it. I wish I could still use that. You could. In, I'm going to Brooklyn tonight after the game. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Drop that line and tell me how it goes. Okay. See if people care. Sure. Uh, we end every podcast with something called the Garbage Tens. Ten random questions. Sure. Be completely honest. You ready? Okay. 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 Uh, what was your first AOL screen name? McMenomania. <laughs> <laughs> I still have friends who call me Mania based on that, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Ranch or blue cheese? Ranch. What's the first concert you ever went to? Aerosmith. Get a Grip Tour. That's sick. At Hershey Park, or Hershey Stadium. Uh, who's your favorite superhero? <laughs> LeBron James. Gambit. <laughs> that's, that's Gambit terrible. is your favorite superhero. Yeah. I was a big X-Men fan back in the day. All right. You know who he is? Yeah, he's the card. Yeah. card. yeah. It's a, it's a cool answer. Most answers are like, Superman, Batman. Yeah. Well, who's yours? Uh, well, I don't, this isn't about me. I can't turn the table. This isn't about me. Uh, <laughs> do you put ketchup all over your fries or on the side of Dipping, your fries? Dipping, for sure. Okay, good. What's your guilty pleasure television show? Like, really <laughs> embarrassing. Wouldn't want people to know you watched it. I have a couple. Uh, like, American Pickers is a, not a good show. But I like the camaraderie between <laughs> the skinny guy and the fat guy, and they go searching for what are they called? Rust, rusty gold? I don't know. We all don't watch uh, it. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, a couple, uh, I watch Pawn Stars sometimes. Like, it's in that same genre yeah. and American Restoration. Yeah. I can get on a block and watch like two hours of those shows. I love show. It's like Chopped. You just watch yeah. over and over and over yeah. and over. Yeah. So and that's over. and it's bad because it's not helping my life whatsoever. You're not learning but, anything. No. Do you watch, like, what's the one with the storage units where they bid on the oh, storage? I had, yeah. a, I had a time I went through that one, too. <laughs> Barry, the old guy? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. So add that one to it. I like yeah. this. Yeah. Do you floss before you brush your teeth or after? Just brush. You don't ever brush floss? Brush and no floss. mouthwash. Wow. Your dentist must be thrilled. Yeah. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. What was the last movie you went to see in the theater? Um... Oscar season, what did I see? I saw something really, oh, Revenant. Was it good? I, I liked it, but no. 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 Uh, last one, you're about to be put to death. What's your final meal? Entree, dessert, and beverage. Entree, dessert, and beverage. Dessert, key lime pie. A slice of key lime pie. Beverage, I guess like a bottle, a glass of bottle. Sure, why not? Last meal, bottle of wine. Bottle, Drink the whole bottle thing. of Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Uh, and uh, I'd like, uh, yeah, steak. What nice kind of, steak. What kind of steak? Like maybe with like, uh, oh, medium rare. Yeah. Maybe it's like peppercorn. Yeah. Um, and uh, sides. What are your sides? Asparagus for yep. sure. Cool. Sauteed mushrooms. Uh, thank you for being here, Dave. This was Thanks fun. Thanks for having me, Katie. Thank you for talking all about LeBron. This is all LeBron. I hope he follows you back. All right, that's it. Thanks again to Dave for sitting down with me and for just in general being a pretty dope human. We'll be back with another podcast on Thursday with my producers. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes and rate our podcast and leave a comment, but only if it's five stars and only if the comment is really nice because, you know, we work really hard. Uh, or you can listen on Art19, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play. I'm sure there's others wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you all for listening. Bye. Love you. Mean it.